Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lily, as always. Um, your talents are wonderful. <laughs> Good morning. I am Jenny Pickett. Uh, welcome to First Congregational Church of Salem. For no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome. I have the pleasure of doing the morning announcements this morning. There are quite a few, and as long as I've been here in the last 20 minutes or so, more have come. So, bear with me. Um, first thing, um, welcome, Pastor and Angel. And I also want to welcome Pastor Brian Donovan's um, mom, sister, niece, friends, and family who are all watching from their various dining rooms, living rooms, kitchens, wherever. Um, he has got a wonderful support team behind him, as well as here. So, from there, my next comment is, is that while you are here watching um, via Facebook or um, the other platforms that we are working on, YouTube, please check in. Pop in a comment. Give us your name. We need to make sure that we have quorum, because with quorum, we can make this an official meeting, and with that, we can begin the voting process. So it's very important that you check in so we know you are here, because although you can see us, we can't see you. So please let us know. Um, also, if you have any additional um, moments of prayer, concern, joy that you'd like to add to the list that you didn't quite get to this week, believe me, it's been a busy week, I understand that, but also please add that to the chat box, and we can add that to our prayer list as well. Now, there are announcements that are already in the service, but I'm adding a few um, that Friday, next week, uh, between 5.30 and 7.30, there will be somebody here at the office to where you can drop off your non-perishable food um, items for the food pantry, um, and Mary will be able to help you out if needed. Um, to day 11, as you, I have said, is the official meeting for First Congregational Church. Please check out Friday's email for any additional details that you might be needing. Today is also the strengthening of the church offering. Also, um, what else do we have? June 7th is communion and food pantry donation. That's when the stuff that we collected on Friday is going to be all set to go on Sunday. Um, and we would also love, love, love to have you volunteer um, on any of your beautiful musical uh, talents, live, recorded, you know, smoke signals. However it gets here is fine. That would be wonderful. And I think that that is all of my announcements. So now I'm welcoming Laura. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I would just like to add a couple other announcements. Um, next week is Communion Sunday, so please be prepared for our online service with a juice and bread of your choice at home, so you're ready to go to join us in our communion. Also, as a really soft, slow opening for our church, we are welcoming those who are comfortable to um, come in and help us with the service, with reading the scripture, being a lay reader, doing a small part. Only if you're comfortable, please feel free to reach out to me, Mark, anyone on the VLT, um, and we can find a way to safely get you to be a part of our online worship service. So this morning, I would have some God moments to share. Thank you for those who sent them in. First, I'd just like to start off with one of my own. Um, this week, we've seen lots of activity in our church, and especially um, thankful for those who stepped up in a gentle, kind way um, to support our church. Thank you to Alan Z, who noticed a couple weeks ago that there was a wire accidentally cut related to the organ. That's why he played on the keyboard the other week. So he came in this week, fixed what he needed to do, worked his Alan magic, and we have a working organ again. So huge thank you to Alan for that. Also to Simone, um, I asked her if she would choose out our hymns for the next month, for the month of June, and she wonderfully picked out some beautiful hymns for the month of June, so we're looking forward to that. It's a huge relief, and it's wonderful to have people um, participate and help in any way, shape, or form um, in the service, so thank you to them. Also, one, there's two God moments from Cindy Mullen, the first one. 
says a God moment when her child is sad or lonely or frustrated and has a conference with his teacher. In just a few minutes, she has a student completely turned around, ready for the rest of the day. God bless the teachers and all the school staff. And continuing on the similar theme, she said, gratitude to the school's district for almost four months of well-executed distance learning. It has been so heartwarming that the teachers and staff have been available online and bravely continuing with new material. Their love for the students shows in everything they do, seeing classmates and friendly teachers and having daily goals and a couple special events has helped. Gratitude for the continued school lunches and gratitude to be done with the school year on June 9th instead of June 16th. I'll chime in on that one as well. Our, another God moment from Tony and Mark. This is adorable. Um, our God moment was made by Maria from Henniker, a wildlife rehab specialist who took on the baby ducklings that made, made their way to their yard on Friday evening. They tried a few times to get them to go back to the wetlands near their house, but each time they followed them back. We called the SPCA, a few vet offices, the New Hampshire and Mass Fish and Games offices, and a few rehab specialists. They were so thankful to find Maria. God bless her and all those who care for our animals. Wonderful God moments. Thank you so much for sharing, and please send more in. We just love to hear your stories of what's going on in your lives and how you see God working in your life. Now we move on to the passing of the peace. So there's lots of ways to share peace. And one way is with our voices. Normally we shake hands. We're not doing that these days, but with our voices. We can share our love and our concern for one another just by speaking to one another and sharing our peace that way. So please reach out to those around you, in your homes, wherever you may be, even if it's just a hello to the clerk at the grocery store. Um, our voice shows peace for all of those around us. <laughs> so peace be with you. And on that note, please join me in the call to worship. God, I come alone to worship you. Beloved, we hear you being silenced. Know that you are not alone. By the baptism of your spirit, I come alone to praise you, God. Beloved, we hear you being ignored. Know that you are not alone. On Jesus' path, I walk alone to learn your way, O God. Beloved, we hear you being forgotten. Know that you are never alone. We come as one body to hear your teachings. Embrace the Spirit's fire and share your love. Let us be an example for the whole world to see. Now please enjoy the hymn, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing by Lily. Thank you, Lily. Now, please join me in the opening prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Creator God, who is creating still, invoke in us your Holy Spirit, so that we may continue to follow as your disciples who hear the teachings of your Son, your Christ. Although our bodies may be apart in time and space, we faithfully bind ourselves to your fellowship and to of all disciples through your Holy Spirit. And like the disciples before us, 
we come in faith, in trust, and in gratitude to praise you, God, for all that you have given us, all that you are teaching us, and all that we will become through you. Allow our voices to help you recreate us into the church you wish us to become. Let us now recall the prayer which Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would all those young and young at heart please come forward? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm young coming forward. You're young at heart. Very good. <laughs> Sorry. It is this, yes. Okay. <laughs> I think we're just figuring out a little bit there. Okay, so we have a good news mystery box today. And my understanding is that we can moderately shake it that there are two items in the box. The McMullen family had the box. One item is from Kyle and the other item is from Cindy. So let's see if we can guess what's in the box. All right. So go ahead, you can take it first. Just moderately shake it and see what you think. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling something stuffed, but I'm not sure. Definitely filling the box. Okay, this hmm. is a tough one. All right. Well, I'm gonna guess, hmm, I'm gonna guess a book. I don't know about the other item. Um, I'm gonna say a kitchen gadget of some type. Well, let me give it one more shake. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't know. Oh. I didn't say I was a good guesser. <laughs> hmm. I'm thinking a toy. Okay. Like something stuffed. I, I don't know. I just got this feeling about. Uh, who All knows? Right. You want to take a guess on the other item, or is you guessing a toy and, and something? And something stuffed. All right, let's open it up and see. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Hmm. Let's see what we have here. Does everyone remember these? <laughs> oh. It's reverse tie-dye. And they've got all their shirts in here, I think. <laughs> oh, you got oh, it right there, on the other item. <laughs> there was, well, actually, there was three items in here, or <laughs> more than that. Okay, and then there's with a dove nice. necklace, and there is a toy. Okay, a is that toy. it? Is that everything? That, that is everything. Okay. 
So we have a toy. <laughs> we have a necklace with a dove on it, which is appropriate for Pentecost. Very appropriate. And we have our reverse tie-dye t-shirts. We do. Now we have to come up with a children's message involving these items. Can I see the shirts? Sure. Because I think we need to display them a little bit more. If you can't read them at home, they say First Congregational Church. Wow, that, that looks almost right, don't you think? Oh, yes. Maybe the dove? What happens if we put the dove here? OK. Yeah, we still got a toy. We still got a toy. What do we got to do with the toy, yeah, We Mary? still have to. Well, it looks like it's a fire engine. It does. And, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, correct. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and firemen come to help people. Absolutely. So with the T-shirts and the dove, I think the message for all of us is that we're a community that helps one another. When we're in need, when we're in good times, when we're in sad times, and even though we're not physically all together, we are still a community bonded by faith. I would agree. That, that seems like the perfect message to me. Bonded by faith through the dove, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, which created our church. Very fitting. OK. Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Would you like to lead us in prayer? Always. <laughs> OK, go right ahead. Gracious God, as we come together as one church, reminded by this message from the youth, from the people of this community, that we are one church across the many places we come from, let us celebrate and praise God for this blessing to be in fellowship together. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture um, there's actually two today, and the first one is Mark 4.21. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? And our second reading comes from Acts 2, 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them her, each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? 
May God add, add his blessing to this word. Thank you, Heather. We don't need this double microphone, so just give me a minute. Good morning. I would like to start today with gratitude. My gratitude for all of you. My gratitude for your faith, for your discernment, your willingness to hear God's call, even during this pandemic. For I have witnessed our churches and houses of worship struggle with technology, yet you embrace new ways to share our fellowship together, faithfully, lovingly. I have witnessed the silence in our societal leadership, yet you discovered new ways to find connections within our church. And I have witnessed the crippling isolation of social distancing, yet I have also witnessed that our search committee, my girlfriend Angel and I, all feel God's loving touch through the Holy Spirit when you called me to be your minister. For these reflections alone, I am grateful and say, well done. To each of you for being open to the Holy Spirit and the movement of God when we found new ways to be disciples of Christ. Now, I believe reflections like these are important, especially when a crisis seems like it is ending. And with our society's push towards a reopening, it does feel like the pandemic is coming to an end. In the love of God, I pray that this disaster is almost over. However, whether it is coming to clo uh, close or just the quiet center of the storm, we have a chance right now, a chance to breathe and to reflect, a chance to understand what we are doing faithfully and where we may have missed the mark as individuals, as a church, as a society during this calamity. In this moment, reflection allows us to embrace the Spirit, hear Christ's teachings, and speak of God's love so we may be re recreated as the church which God is calling us to become together. Before we fully begin, though, would you pray with me? Holy Spirit of God, who created the church with tongues of fire, Fill our hearts now so we may reflect, we may learn, and we may find our voice as we are recreated by you through this crisis. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all our hearts be pleasing to you, God. Now, while reflecting on our society this week, I must share that I became disheartened disheartened because of one salient point, which reveals the depth that our New England culture has fallen. The problem which I am seeing, which I am hearing in the folds of the news, which saddens me greatly, came fully to light when our society, societal leaders began discussing the reclassification of churches as essential. Yes, here in New England, we only just began to discuss that faith may be essential. After months of our voice being silenced, after months where people without computers, internet, or the knowledge to work them were isolated from their faith communities, after months where elderly in nursing homes who could not see their chaplain 
were alone in quarantine. After months where loving families were, have been struggling with forced togetherness or desperate crippling isolation. Here in a country which is based on religious freedom, our leaders deemed worship as non-essential months ago. Mind you, I believe that God is here with us now as we lead worship across Facebook and YouTube just as much as if we had come together physically today. I also believe that most people of faith would have chosen to stay at home anyways, to faithfully self-isolate for our most vulnerable citizens, to consciously keep one another safe by flattening the curve. But the problem was that we were not given a choice. Church was simply deemed non-essential. And this silencing by our society saddens me. This reality of life also reminds me of someone else's life, a person who is deemed non-essential by his society's leadership, a, person's, a person whose teachings were seen as a plague, a person whose followers were molested when they gathered. That person was Jesus. And in his society, the leadership attempted to silence him as well. Silence him by taking his life. And there was silence. A silence at, in the days after Jesus ascended. Silence which always happens at the end of a storm or the quiet center. At the end of a conflict or the quiet center of a storm, a silence which provided the disciples the space to breathe and time to reflect. Then those disciples who followed Jesus' teachings gathered. They still followed the Jewish tradition and they met at the Feast of Weeks, at Pentecost, at this great pilgrimage which celebrates the Torah, the law, which is also the first five books of the Bible. It was at this point that the disciples came together despite the danger, despite society's attempt to silence Jesus' teachings, despite the isolation they had been thrust into after the ascension. The disciples reflected. They heard the call and gathered together once again. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We were silenced. We are reflecting. And now we are gathering to answer God's call. The story sounds familiar. However, I imagine you were wondering the same thing the disciples wondered. What does this mean? Well, let us ponder what transpired next. Let's think about what happened on that day. God recreated the church. He created a church which followed Jesus' teachings. When she sent the Holy Spirit to descend upon the gathered Jews from every nation, in that moment, the disciples were given a voice to speak and ears to hear each other in their native language. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is our traditional understanding of our Christian church's birth. Yet it is also a growth from a crisis, a continuation in a new form of the Jewish religion, and a recreation of the church which we are becoming. And this miracle is the good news but perhaps today's good news is not in the way you might imagine. For throughout our tradition, we have generally focused on the miracle that all people could understand one another in their own native language, regardless of what tongue was spoken. It is why the, the theologian Christopher Matthews explains that Pentecost could be 
a very reversal of the confusion of languages which transpired at the Tower of Babel. Hmm. However, what does that message really send? If we are saying that our church is formed it, by simply reversing the confusion which happened in the Torah, are we promoting an anti-Semitic view by taking an approach that the miracle of Pentecost is a reversal of the law? Hmm. How do we justify this understanding with the truth that Jesus came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it? Perhaps there is something more to the miracle of Pentecost. And I assure you, there is something more. Something else happened that day, which we often overlook. When we let the miracle of hearing one another overshadow the miracle which took place only seconds before. The miracle when everybody began to speak. This good news is important, for God does not call us to be simple subjects of the world. Rather, God calls us to reflect, to discern, and to share our thoughts, our feelings, and our beliefs, so we can come together and grow closer to God through the diversity of many voices speaking. Voices like Peter's, to voices like Paul's. Voices which incorporate the entire spectrum of people from the modest to the flamboyant, from the extrovert to the introvert. All these voices are important and this is the first miracle of Pentecost that all the disciples began to speak. And in this miracle, our church was formed we, as we were baptized in God's spirit. Yet today, in the 21st century, many Christians have not spoken. We allowed ourselves to be silenced when our society classified our worship as non-essential. And although you in this community have done the most extraordinary things over the last four months, like learning how to recreate worship, finding new ways to share music, thank you all, and discover innovative ways and methods to call a pastor. I wonder if we could do something more as we move forward together. Is there a message for us in the good news of Pentecost. Could it be that God is still calling us to share our voice, share what we have learned with other communities, share how we are reaching the homebound, share how we are supporting families who are struggling with togetherness, share with society how essential God is, especially in the depth of a crisis. Today, our special offering will ask us to help strengthen the church by sharing a portion of our financial blessings. But right now, I am asking you to be open to the Holy Spirit and share your voice so our church can, may be strengthened through your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs. Share your story so we can grow together. Share your sorrows so we can help carry you through the crisis of your life. And let us share with other communities our successes throughout this crisis so the whole body of Christ may be strengthened together. Now this call to action may seem like a moot point for our church may engage in physical worship again soon. However, we must remember that this could also be the quiet center of the storm. And this virus may resurge again next fall. So let us learn from the good news of Pentecost 
and share our voice so we are prepared for a resurgence. And the whole church is strengthened with our insights. That said, we must also individually be open to God's spirit and find our own voice. Share that your spiritual well-being matters. Share that our faith matters. Share that God matters and is essential to us every day. In fact, this idea reminds me of the philosopher Kwame Anthony Apaya, who put it best when he said that if nations or religious communities or families matter, they matter because they make a difference to the people who compose them. Therefore, faith may not matter to our society, but if we do not use our voice, we are showing that it does not matter to us either. So with these thoughts, I pray that you will share your voice to strengthen our church. Share your voice to proclaim we are essential. Simply share your voice so we may be one choice, church, following Jesus' teachings, bound through the baptism of the Spirit, who are called together by the love of God. Amen. Please join and enjoy our middle hymn, number 171, Jesus Calls Us Over the Talmud. Now we come to the heart of our worship service, our time of prayer, our time to share both our concerns and our joys, our time to give voice to our burdens and our blessings. For a burden carried by many is lighter than when it is carried alone. And a blessing is even brighter when it is shared with the people you love. Today, I invite you to share your concerns and joys through the online chats if you have not done so already. I invite you to do this so I can continue to pray for you throughout the week and also because your voice matters. Faithful disciples, after the silence, I will give Jacob a chance to share any of these additional prayers so we may all hear your concerns and your joys. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, who created our church and bound us together in one fellowship, come to us now. Bring us a voice to speak and ears to hear so we may feel the kingdom which you are creating. In this, let us be one with you and through you with all that you have created. In silence, let us recall all the concerns and all the joys which we carry individually. start with those which were sent in earlier. 
Let us pray for Tom Fadden and his, and his struggles with pancreatic cancer. For Christy and Richard Butler. God be with you, Richard, as you battle your leukemia. The Thoreau family, as two-year-old Gracie also battles leukemia. God bless you both. The Tuttle family, for Bobby, who is both a husband and a father, and has now been deployed to Iraq. May you be kept safe and in the peace and love of God. To Jackie Sirocco, who bat battles with Parkinson's and dementia and is currently in a rehab facility. Our love is with you. For the peace and understanding for our country and an end to racial inequality, we are all God's children. For prayers for the one-year-old Sky, who's experiencing medical challenges, God be with you, Sky. For all the parents and students as they struggle for schooling people, for schooling their children at home. This is a struggle when we are not, that we are still dealing with. And God bless you all and be with you. Jacob, are there any other prayers? A blessing for Abby's 14th birthday on Thursday. A blessing for Abby's 14th birthday on Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday. Blessings, Abby. Happy birthday. That's all. Are there any prayers or joys or concerns here? Betty Wolf wanted to um, have prayers for the country to stop violence. Mm, I love that. Becky Wolf had a prayer for the country to stop violence. Absolutely. Please let there be peace. Then let us continue our prayer. Holy God, hear our prayers and embrace us now in your loving arms, for your people are hurting, your church is hurting, your world is hurting. And we need you, God, to help us carry these burdens. Hold us through our tears and recreate us free from the pain if it is a blessing to us or to your creation. God, we ask you to hear our joys for these prayers of thanksgiving are only a glimpse of the love we feel for you and the home you created in us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, gratefully, amen. Blessed people, our time of offering is more than just a point in the service where we share a portion of our financial blessings. It is also a time to celebrate and strengthen the church. It is a time to show that the ministries happening here matter. It is a time to offer our faith, our works, and our love to God so they may be hold, made holy for the week to come. We have a special additional offering this week to strengthen the church of the UCC, which will help the whole body of Christ. Please consider sharing with this ministry as well, per the instructions in our new weekly newsletter. I invite you now to share your offering through a check, a deposit, or the code on the screen. Please give only as you are able and, and in God's name. God, we dedicate these gifts of our faith, our works, our love to you, and the ministries which you have called us to do on this earth. May they be used according to your will alone to grant justice, 
to welcome the stranger and to build our fellowship through your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, amen. Our closing hymn, done by Lily, is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Share your voice with all the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit.